हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू मिजो स्टडी एंड वेलकम टू माय क्लास टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस दैट इज लॉज ऑफ केमिकल कॉम्बिनेशन एम स्टार्टिंग फ्रॉम योर लॉज ऑफ केमिकल कॉम्बिनेशन यस सर अगेन आई एम रिपीटिंग वी विल गोइ वी we are going to discuss that is laws of chemical combination now we have first law that is law of conservation of mass law of conservation of mass what is the statement of this law according to this law mass can neither be created nor be destroyed the second law is law of constant proportion clear to you yes third one is law of multiple proportion fourth one is law of reciprocal law of reciprocal proportion and the fifth one is law of combining law of combining volume of gases the next law we study generally that is verzelius law the second one is abo gedros law now next one is dalton's atomic theory or modern atomic theory generally we study these laws now it is given law of conservation of mass that is mass can neither be created nor be destroyed this was given by lavoisier but uh, as we all know the, uh, as per the statement suppose a reaction take place a plus b which gives c plus d that mean to say we know we can say total mass of reactants will be equal to total mass of products total mass of reactants will be equal to total mass of product that is mass of a plus mass of b equal to mass of c plus mass of d that is during a reaction mass uh, during a reaction mass always mass always remain conserved it was experimentally uh, verified by landolt that is agno3 plus nacl it gives nac uh, nano3 plus azcl that was the equation and he had uh, he has he had taken the value of agno3 that is measured x measured uh, value of agno3 and measured value of nacl then made uh, when they combine they form nano3 plus azcl after the experiment he found that that is x plus y mass of reactant will be exactly equal to mass of product though the product changes mm, that is agno3 now here is azcl plus nano3 that mean to say product changes that mean to say new product formation take place still the mass will not change that mean to mass will not change as per the that is total mass total mass of the reactant will exactly equal to total mass of the product clear to you but this is this law is not completely true but as as per the uh, einstein equation we know e is equal to mc square mass can be converted to energy and energy can be converted to mass that is the equation actually delta mc square this is called mass defect uh, and generally we use this method in nuclear chemistry radioactive transformation so overall we can say law of conservation or law of energy no is not um, independently true law of conservation of mass and energy are completely true 
clear to you yes sir now the second one is law of constant proportion this law this law was given by proust according to this law a compound a compound has always a fixed composition uh, it doesn't uh, matter from it doesn't depend upon the way of preparation or the method of preparation that what i'm telling uh, suppose uh, if carbon and oxygen combine and they form carbon dioxide what about the method in carbon dioxide co2 the composition will be 1 tends to 2 or by mass by mass that is in a compound elements are always present in a fixed ratio by mass that is 12 into 32 okay 4 3 is a 12 and 4 8, 3 tends to 8 Suppose if I take H2O, the ratio will be 1 tends to 8. Suppose if I take CO, the ratio will be 12 tends to 16, that is 3 tends to 4. In a compound, the atoms or the elements are always present in a fixed ratio by mass. That is, it does not depend upon the way or the method of preparation. But there is some drawback of this law. Suppose if I consider the organic compound like C3S6O, it can show CS3, CS2, CS, uh, CHO, aldehyde or it can show CS3, CO, CS3. This is ketone. Both are different compound but the composition is same. So, there are different drawbacks. Now, the next one law of multiple proportion, this law was given by John Dalton. What is the uh, statement of this law? Suppose if I am moving, is it visible? Suppose if two atom combine to form uh, more than one compound, suppose uh, we, uh, if we take NO, NO combined to form N2O, can form NO, can form N2O3, can form NO2 can form N2O4 can form N2O5. Then what we observe the fixed mass of an atom which combine with the variable mass of another atom always bear a simple ratio by mass. Suppose if I take N2O, NO, if I consider N2O, NO and N2O3, what is the mass here 28 tends to 16 in this case NO that is 14 tends to 16 and 2O3 28 tends to uh, 48 clear now we have to uh, fix the mass of one atom one element uh, I am fixing that is nitrogen multiplied by 2 so multiplied by 2 so what we have we have the fixed composition here fixed mass of nitrogen 28 28 which combined with the variable mass of oxygen always bear a simple ratio that is 16 tends to 32 tends to 48 that is 1 tends to 2 tends to 3 am i right similarly law of reciprocal proportion this was given by richer and according to this law what we have suppose if i take nah and cl now if na is the friend of h and na is the friend of cl that is if na combine with h and form nah and na combine with cl form nacl now this is the fixed atom now the ratio of h and cl in this case will be 1 tends to 35.5 will exactly be the uh, uh, exactly same when h and cl individually combine they form a cl that is 1 tends to 35.5 or some multiple it may be 1 tends to uh, some multiple means that is uh, if here is uh, here comes x tends to y uh, in this question th there comes to, uh, maybe 2x tends, tends to simple uh, multiple clear to you 2x tends to 3y or so on clear yeah this is the statement of law of reciprocal proportion uh, we can take uh, maximum number we have lots of examples uh, you can take uh, take the pair like sulfur oxygen like hydrogen check the things okay now law of combining volume of gases what does it mean it uh, this law was given by gay uh, lussac according to this law when two gaseous atom combine 
then by volume they will bear a simple ratio at same temperature and pressure that is 2 SCLs they will bear they uh, will bear a simple ratio when they combine with each other ratio is 1 tends to 1 let me check once yes SCL clear yes this is uh, this law was given by law of uh, uh, gay lussac and this is called law of combining volume of gases 1 tends to 1 and suppose if I write C plus O2 it gives CO2 here law of uh, combining volume of gases is not valid because one reactant is in solid state but here is valid because they oh, both are in uh, uh, gaseous state and the condition is same temperature and same condition similar condition of temperature and pressure clear now Bergelier hy hypothesis we know equal volume of all gases contain equal number of atoms equal volume of all gases contain equal number of atoms but this statement is not completely true this was modified by Avogadro during my uh, regular lecture I have proved it why I have proved uh, this statement why Berzelius law is not true and Avogadro law is true actual statement uh, generally we study as per the Avogadro law equal volume of all gases contain equal number of molecules not atoms equal volume of all gases contain equal number of molecules not atoms this is the statement and we generally use this method this statement to solve uh, the question related to law of combining volume of gases or anything and related to mole now delta's atomic theory we are very much familiar and modern atomic theory there is an introduction of isotopes and isobars we will study this in periodic table clear to you i have discussed this law in a short and i hope it will help you a lot clear to you in my next lecture i will discuss few more thing till then bye bye thank you so much